there's other stuff going down. Five passengers on that plane do not exist. It's a network running all across Europe. So then we're an incoming missile. See, we're us or them. And I can tell you, it's not going to be us. Lacan, Jamie, Hi, good man. morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for joining me to talk about Hijack, uh, streaming on Apple TV+. Plus. I enjoyed it immensely. Thank you so much. Great. Great. Well, when I was a kid in the 70s, you know, planes were hijacked all the time, you know, mostly for political reasons, you know, take this plane to Cuba. And I thought, does it even happen in today's times? Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't remember a plane being hijacked. I think that's <laughs> one of the appeals of this show is that something that just doesn't happen anymore in the modern age. Yeah, I think um, that was definitely a, a, a big question for us that we, you know, you take a big high concept idea like that and we wanted to bring a, a uh, a spin on it that wasn't, you know, we didn't want to go into political or ideological reasons for the for the hijack, and um, th that was one of the big sort of tenets of it, and also one of the challenges. But also and, tell that story in a way that would relate to modern audiences, you know, and what would happen if you were the victim of a hijack, you know, what, 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 what? How would you react to that? How would you engage with that? And uh, obviously, for our main protagonist, Sam Nelson, you know, he. He takes on the mantle of being the person that's going to try and navigate it. Yeah, and because his character, he's got one one goal in mind, get home to his family, because he's not your mm -hmm. average hero. He's not law enforcement, but he's a special kind of ne negotiator of sorts. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I mean, we wanted to take someone with kind of relatable, knowable skills that, you know, from a in a business situation and put them in an extraordinary situation and see how those things apply. And in a way, what I think is, you know, fun about the show and great about Idris's performance is that you never, you never, it's a, it's a kind of everyman superhero role. It's not somebody in kind of a, in a cape doing things that you couldn't imagine ever doing yeah. yourself. <laughs> yeah, he's not military. He's not a special forces. No. He's just an average guy yeah. that uh, has to use his skills to get home safely. And but watching Hijack has been described as a seven episode panic attack. And I agree with that. Uh, was there challenges in keeping the tension and suspension on a six hour plane ride? Yeah, of course there were. It was it was really um, I mean, it, it's I guess I guess, you know, you sort of build it as um, you set yourself and your central character that this problem how do you get around this and and George Kay and Jim Field Smith the, the creators of the show were kind of meticulous about obeying the rules that they set and I think that's the the key to that panic attack feeling that you, you describe is that you know you take an ordinary guy with the ordinary things you might find on a plane and how might you talk your way out of or wrangle your way out of this situation and that's um, I think trying to keep take a high, really high concept idea, but keep the, um, the methods of overcoming it as, as lo-fi as possible uh, a, a part of the key to, I think, why it feels so tense. And there's so much stuff that's unexpected, but for everyone, including the hijackers. So things go wrong, things don't go to plan. You know, these situations are, the situation is evolving. And so, you know, m managing that within the confines of that plane in no circumstances flying over different countries that are responding in different ways you know it just adds this fantastic sort of mix to create a lot of tension and and uh uh hypertension <laughs> actually no, oh absolutely uh, absolutely but yeah. shooting on a plane there are there are so many sets available in hollywood and around the world did you have a, a specific type of plane needed something you know because you feel so combined in this yeah. space but did you look for a specific kind of set for this yeah setting? we um yeah it was going to be an a330 which is the most common plane that flies between london and dubai that's the type, type of aircraft that's used and so we uh spent a little while trying to track down uh, a plane that we could is you know it doesn't have wings but we have the entire fuselage of the plane was sort of built in a studio um, it was a composite of different uh, bits of a plane, but it was basically an A330, and uh, yeah, it was a it was a bit of a technical challenge to sort of do that, and um, but we we managed to pull it off. And, and working with Idris Elba, you know, he's also executive producer, part of his production company. Uh, how was it like working with him? 
he's fantastic. He's an absolute uh, dream to work with. He, he, obviously, his talent is, you know, unquestionable. He's done a fantastic job, um, but he's a great partner. He's a great person to work with. You know, he's really committed and he really cares about every aspect of the show. And that was just a joy. Um, you know, he's 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 a great guy. And Jamie, uh, more Sam Nelson, more uh, more negotiations. I mean, I can see a whole whole series of these films. <laughs> Good. Well, please send me all your best ideas. <laughs> <laughs> well, not just the plane, but you know, there's other places where people need his skills. I'm sure. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's, he's hoping. He's hoping. <laughs> Wonderful, gentlemen. Congratulations on an exciting series. I appreciate your time this morning. Let's talk again soon. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank bye, you. Bye, Have bye. a great day. Bye.